Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you are a new viewer or uh, you want to be a subscriber, you know, go down, click that subscribe button, click that little bell notification icon. So you'll be notified when I do publish new content. Once again, I want to thank everybody for being here. What we're going to talk about tonight is the internet and the bad things that are on the internet and how we block some of those things on the internet. So look at this sweet internet, the internet shirt. Thing's pretty sweet. This was, this was uh, sent to me by Techie T-Shirt Club, and uh, they're not paying me for this, but uh, they did send me this really cool T-Shirt, and so I'm going to put a, uh, a link to Techie T-Shirt Club. They're making all kinds of T-Shirts um, for, for those of us who are techie and, and geeky and nerdy or whatever you want to call us, and uh, there's a link down there, and I think there might be a 10% off promotional code. Um, I don't know if I get anything from that or not. Um, but I thought the t-shirts were real co pretty cool. So if they keep sending me shirts, I'll probably keep, uh, keep reminding you that they are there. That's uh, techie t-shirt club. The other thing that we're going to talk about is if you remember, and I'm going to try to put a card up here somewhere, uh, if I can remember how to do that. Otherwise I'll put the link down below. But a couple of years ago, I did a video on DNS filtering with an edge router and we used dnsfilter.com. And it's been so long since I did a video on dnsfilter.com. I wanted to remind you that they're, they are not paying me for this. This is not a paid promotion, but I use DNS filter every day. And if you are looking for an effective way to do DNS filtering, you should check them out. Their prices are phenomenal. So here is the website. And I just want to touch on a few things. Um, and yes, you can set up your edge router and many other routers doesn't work so well with the USG. Uh, but definitely if you're using edge routers, if we're using the Dray tech, um, if we are using the grand stream, uh, we could use this in combination with the Synology. So really the only router that we're using so far that this doesn't really work well with is the USG because we need a little bit more fine grain control, um, over the traffic. So, like I said, uh, Edge Router, Grandstream, GWN 7000, uh, the Synology RTC series, and the Draytech series of routers, and I think I said Edge Router. Anyway, um, we can use DNS filter. We can install, you know, their uh, just, it's really simple. We use their IP addresses. We capture all DNS traffic, redirect it to that. Now, I know what you're saying. What about, you know, DNS over HTTPS? Uh, DNS filter, I believe has that capability. So let's take a look at some of the features that they do have. Um, one of the things that I actually like is that we can have multiple policies, uh, per, per building, right? So if I've got one group of people in a building that need a different filtering policy, I can easily configure that, uh, through their NAT setup and use different, a different set of DNS servers for, the group that needs different access. So like in a very common use case for me, when we do point of sale machines, point, point of sale machines are like really, really locked down. You don't get regular web surfing. You don't get a lot of things. You get the websites that are needed to do the point of sale. So if you're hosting the point of sale on a server, you would obviously get that. You would get Windows updates, Chrome updates, Firefox updates, but then we lock down everything else. And then also your yeah, credit card processor stuff would be open and that's all segregated onto its own network. But then everything is controlled through DNS. Of course, windows is set up so that the users are not administrators, so they can't change the network settings. And so we have a really tight control on those point of sales because we don't want to introduce anything that's going to steal customer information um, and allow criminals, you know, to commit, commit fraud like that. So, um, and then, so we use DNS filter to lock down and only allow traffic to the sites that we want. So I can, uh, I will tell you that a DNS filter, the interface is super, super friendly. They offer a free 14 day trial, so you should check it out. Um, but the one thing that I like is that it will, and they, they mention it here on their page, is that if they don't have a site that's classified, their uh, system can actually scan the site and try to auto-classify it. So they don't always rely on people. 
Another thing that you can do is they have an option to block, you know, known malware sites, known ransomware sites and things like that. And it works really well. You can uh, whitelist and blacklist domains separately. So even though you might have a category blocked, if there's a site that you need uh, open that might fall within that category, you can actually go in and over override that with a whitelist. And you can see um, all of the different uh, policies that they have here. Um, so yeah, illegal content, adult content, streaming media, chat and instant message, social networking, all that good stuff. Um, and you can force Google Safe Search, Bing Safe Search, and I wanted to say there was one, one other one. But, you know, and, and I really wanted to do this too because I get asked the question all the time, like how do we do content filtering? And we'll look at the price of this here um, in a second. And it does have really, really nice reports. So they, they do say beautiful reports. But they do, the reports actually look just like what you're seeing right here. And they're the nice uh, pie graphs and breaks it down. Now, um, I do, like, if you really want to, if you really want to check this out, get your hands on it, do the 14 day uh, free trial. You know what? We'll probably create an account real quick and log in too. And, uh, you know, we'll do our own, our own demo real quick. But uh, the pricing one of the ways that I can justify this is that the pricing is so inexpensive that I'm, I'm particular about what I put in the cloud, but with something like DNS filtering, um, if your internet's down, like the internet doesn't work anyway. Right. So whether I have an appliance or whether my DNS filtering is done in the cloud to me, the, this is a perfect use, you know, for the cloud to, to harness that. So you can do basic users, 90 cents per user per month. Um, if you pay annually or a dollar per month per user, there's a $20 minimum, but it's very cost effective, right? So if I have a, um, if I have 20 users in my office, let's just say I'm paying the, the monthly, it's $240 a year. I can't buy an appliance with a warranty for $240 a year to do this, this filtering and then to update it and, and pay for that. So it, it very quickly shows its value. Um, but let's, you know what, let's do this instead of me, uh, just talking and talking, let's, uh, let's create the free trial and we will log in real quick. So I'm going to fill this out and we'll be right back. All right, so we are we are logged, we're logged in, and you can see uh, right now. So there are um, this has got some some sample data in it. This is obviously not a real site, but you can see that you can have different sites and you can have different policies within those sites. Now the sites are attributed to IP addresses. If you have sites that have dynamic. Um, IPs, that's okay. You can use dynamic DNS and then attribute the policies to the dynamic DNS name. So here is the, uh, the uh, filters. And you can see in here we've got a policy called um, porn filter. But these are the DNS IP addresses that we would set our clients to or our router if our router is going to do all that for us. But we can add another policy in here and we're just going to call this uh, default block policy and we'll create it 
And if you come in here, you can look at all of the categories that they have. These are all of the broad categories. So we could block drugs. We could block uh, terrorism and hate. We could block adult. I was like, oh, adult didn't want to be blocked. Did you see that? We could block uh, alcohol and tobacco. We could block hacking and cracking. Uh, P2P and illegal. We could block media sharing, weapons, all that good stuff. And now it's blocked. Here's our safe search. So we can enforce Google safe search, Bing safe search. And there it is. DuckDuckGo, uh, Yandex. And then we can also enforce YouTube restricted mode. You turn all those on and enforce all the things. And you can do moderate or strict for YouTube. Then here's that threats that I was talking to you about. So we can block botnets, crypto mining, uh, malware, new domains. So if domains are newly uh, registered within the last 30 days, it can uh, block those. Phishing and deception, proxy and filter avoidance. So if people are trying to get around this, we can block those sites. And we can block translation sites. Here's that whitelist. So we can uh, add any domains that we want to explicitly allow. Here's the blacklist, so this would be explicitly blocked devices. And then under advanced, this is where we can have um, multiple um, multiple NATed IPs. So this is where we can have multiple policies in the same building if we're doing this based on IP. We can look at our deployments and uh, it would give us physical address. If we're doing um, either IPs or the DNS host names, that would be here. And that's how that gets attributed. That's where DNS filter sees that traffic coming from. So that's how they attribute, attribute that and keep that set up. They do have roaming clients that you can download. So uh, software that gets downloaded to devices and automatically enforces this um, on the machines. And you can see you can do it on uh, Mac OS, Windows, Chrome OS, iPhone, iPad, and Android. So you can enforce the policy for a given site on a device when they're not behind that site, which is super nice. Um, we can do relays. And this I'm not familiar with, so I am just going to read this. This is the DNS filter relay is a local area network software DNS proxy. And so it looks like that it allows you literally to just literally set up an internal DNS server that handles that traffic out to DNS filter. Here's that reporting that we were talking about. Really go out there, sign up for a 14 day trial, go back, use my video, set it up on your router. Here's queries per second, most active sites. So look at that. People love pie charts. I love them just like they love regular pie. Here's our top domains, top categories. Um, you can filter it by top to blocked. Here's our threats. These are the biggest threats, the domains. Here's the categories, phishing, crypto mining, malware. I really can't say enough about this software. It's so inexpensive compared to some of the competitors. Um, it does such a fantastic job. So here is our um, organization profile. You can have multiple users. You can white label. Here's all of our bill, billing info, billing plans. They've got some tools. So if you want to um, download their SSL certificate, you can enjoy all of the blocked pages over um, HTTPS. So you'll notice when you're using this that sometimes you can get um, you'll get an, a, an error in Chrome um, and it'll say that the site that you're trying to browse, um, the certificate isn't from that site and this will fix, fix that error. So you can do that. You've got the query log you can look at, policy audit log, domain lookup. I mean, DNS filter has come a long, long way. I was an original beta tester. Uh, when one of the founders, Ken, reached out to me, I was one of the beta testers and I was so happy that there was an alternative out there. And um, I'm really honestly not getting paid for this. I just, I really like DNS filter. 
It's a, they're a great company. Their pricing is super fair. Um, and, um, you should check them out. If you want to do DNS filtering, in my opinion, uh, depending on the size of the site, it is more, um, cost advantageous for you to do it this way than it is to put in an appliance. Um, and even if you're looking at putting in an appliance, like I said, if your internet's down or your appliance goes bad, you know, so this is one way that I really like to leverage the cloud. And I, I think it's a really good use for cloud services and cloud compute and stuff like that. Another thing that DNS filter has is they have an, any, you know, all of their DNS servers are set up on any cast, which means that they have a global infrastructure of DNS servers that um, are all reachable. And that way, if somebody does a denial of service, you know, on the West coast, Servers are still up and running in other regions, um, and they're all reachable. And, and they say 100% uptime, and they may have 100% uptime. We have never, uh, in any of the capacities that I use DNS filter, had a service outage unless uh, they were going to let us know that there was maintenance or whatever. So check it out. Go check out DNS filter. They, uh, I think I do have a link, but I, I don't think it's an affiliate link. Um, but just, I'll just put a link to just regular DNS filter and you can tell them that Willie sent you. So I'll put that, that down below, but go check it out. Um, and if you need help configuring your routers, no matter what it is to use DNS filter or any other DNS, uh, filtering service, go to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form and we can help you out with that. If you need any other type of IT consulting, you can also fill out that form and someone will get back to you as soon as possible. I want to thank all my patrons. As always, all of my affiliate links are down below. You can use those. Don't feel pressured. Uh, they don't change your price, but they do kick a couple bucks over to the channel. I want to thank everybody for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.